Rupestris, one of my first Rupiculus Lelias from Luca Orchideen in Germany. It's a very slow grower. I got it with this growth here, just starting this one. It was like down here. And this is all it's done in, well, it's been a year now that I've got this. November of 19. Yes, it's been a year. So it's trying to acclimatize, I guess, still. It's pot bound. It passes the tug test. Maybe just a very slow grower, but I'm glad that it's still alive because I didn't have much to work with, with one little back bulb there and one mature bulb. So that's a good thing. Repestris is doing well. Hello. Guess who I've got out here to fit the season. These are all my stocking fillers and I've grouped them. And usually they are now tucked away to the right side of my blooming alley on a bottom shelf and I can see them every day. And I miss them once a day. And that is usually around noon now, just to sort of maintain their dew factor. But there are some differences. So I've pulled them all out because I wanted to explain what I do, why I do it, and what the differences are that I'm talking about. So Rupestris is a classic example that only gets a little bit of a misting at around noon with RO water only, plain RO water. So far, I have not had any seaweed in my water since the end of summer and the temperatures at night have dropped. So because it's not doing anything, just plain RO water just to simulate the dew point that they get in nature. Moving along to my Kautskiana, and it has matured this gorgeous growth here this year. Very pleased with that. It does have a sheath, but the sheath is empty. It's quite difficult to tell because they're so itty bitty, but I believe that sheath is empty. However, now it's doing something on the bottom right there. And I believe that is a new growth coming. It is still only getting its plain RO water misting because until I'm not sure if that is going to manifest itself into actually a growing new growth, there is no need for any fertilizer. I'm just simulating the dew point. And here is the Alvaraguensis. And it's not doing anything either. Just RO water, the fornery just RO water spraying. It is not even quite established in the pot yet, despite also being from Luca Orchideen. And I've had it a year, so it's a more complicated one to get established here for whatever reason, maybe just the species. And here's Lelia Regina that we repotted because I liked it in a square pot and it was getting far too big. And that new growth is coming along really well. So this one, gets a little bit of fertilized misting in the morning. And yes, I'm still at 300 ppm because it is actively growing. So that's MSU fertilizer, 300 ppm. It gets a misting in the morning. And then around noon, when I go around with a plain RO water, I mist it one more time, simply because I want to keep those minerals contained at the surface of the media. So, the dew point comes with fertilizer and then afterwards it gets a little one again because they are very thirsty when they're actively growing. Despite the time of year, get a lot of water despite that. And here is Flavasolina. I also just repotted it recently because I like the little square pots. And it's maturing the two little new growths that were actively going on during the repot quite nicely. Of course, it's not pot bound just yet, but it is stable and it is pushing out another new growth. Very vigorous little guy. One day I'll see blooms. My Lelia Flava here in the bigger of a square version of the pots, did a repot on that. That is Akadama on the top. And that new growth is coming along really nicely. I'm liking where I'm gonna see the new bulb is going to be. Because you can see the size, what it can do. 
the acclimating size here that I got during the summer. It's bringing out a new growth that is going to be a smidgen larger than the one before. I'm liking the progress on my flower very, very much, especially since the setup has changed. And on the bottom, I've got mainly Akadama mixed with grit. So very happy about that. And then we come to the Gruß Rechner Orchideen Lelias that I bought a little bit later on, because now I had got the Repiculus bug. So these were bought in February of 20. And again, up until now, this Esalkeana was just getting their, that one daily misting, but it is now starting on a new growth. So that is wonderful. In about a month or so, I'm going to start with fertilizer on this one. I now have to be a bit more careful with at which angle I missed. So it faces in the opposite direction and the spray would come from this side just to stay away from that new growth for any eventualities. These are pretty tight growing new growth, so I'm not concerned about rot. But why, why test the matter? No need. And then here's Crispy Labia, not doing anything except looking gorgeous. And it has two sheaths, whether they amount to anything, I don't know. Just plain RO water. My Harpophila, very, very happy how this has developed. This was the biggest growth that I had when I received it. And it grew this one for me in this season. And this little sheath is getting chubby. I can feel something there, which is awesome. I'm really happy how this one developed because it was a very, very sorry little Rapiculus Lelia when I got it. And my Giuliani over here is actually doing, I, I, I have no words, really well. I'm so pleased with these little guys because they're supposed to be notoriously difficult to grow, but with a few exceptions because the orchid was weak when I received it, I've not really struggled with them whatsoever. And Giuliania is getting that new growth coming in really well, maturing nicely. And this one is getting a fertilizer in the morning. And then the RO flush water misting uh, around noontime. Ketiana as well, just RO water. There is no signs of new growth here, but I love the size of the bulb that matured this summer. So simple RO water, just copying the dew point, what they would have in nature. My most recent acquisition from Großrechner Orchideen is the Lelia Sincorana that you see here, and it is busting out a new growth. You can see that right at the bottom there. That's great. Very happy because that means new roots. But from what I can gather, none of the old roots have died. The orchid never shriveled. There was no sign of any kind of stress. New roots are already growing despite the fact that there's just a new growth. So it took to the setup relatively easily and very quickly. Super pleased. I'm going to just switch over here to the Lucasiana which went straight into a square pot. There's been no activity on this one since I got it. It's been also, it came in September from Großrechner Orchideen, but it hasn't declined one bit. I think it's just resting or trying to figure out where on earth it is in order to do its thing. Beautiful roots. All the old roots that it came with are still intact. So plain RO water at noon, always for this one. And then very exciting, here's my Entrelsiae, and it is in spike. And that spike is growing and growing and growing, ever so delicate. Super soft spike, very cautious with that one. Don't want to mess that up. Would love to see the little blooms on that. But the same thing here, that growth was maturing when I got it, and it didn't skip a beat. It's got some wonderful roots going down into the media. Some of the old bark I left on because I wasn't going to stress the roots. The rest is just ceramus and lava rock. Perfect, perfect. And it's adapting really well. Looking forward to see how this one will develop in long term because there's some serious substance to this Repiculus one. It's a little bit bigger than the other Repiculus you normally see. 
like the Lelia flava over here. They're quite large. And again, once they get going, they get going. They don't stop. They're little, they're fast. And this one will then also obviously go into a bigger square pot. But for now, let's just get it settled in and see those blooms. And then I finally got my order from Floralia late in the season. But here we have Sincorana. So from Roskashna, I got the Cerula one, and here is the regular Sincorana. And look at this. Oh, if you didn't see the unboxing video, I'm going to leave a link and I'll show you the state of the orchids when they arrive. But look at this Sincorana. Beautiful new roots growing everywhere. A new root just attaching itself there to the leka. And you can see the root tips everywhere. This makes me so happy because they were in a very bad state. That little quetched new growth there stays quetched. Even though I released it from the sheath it had dried up in, it's not going to seem to want to straighten up or mature. But I have another one coming right here. Very happy about this progress. This is super important. And also the Itambana right here. Look at this. <laughs> Oh, look at how cute it is, so tiny. And you can see that it didn't arrive with scale, but it had scale damage. But look, one new growth and another new growth. So it is not established in the pot by no means, but it hasn't deteriorated since the repotting. And boy, was it in bad shape when it arrived. But we're on our way. Those two new growths will mount, amount to something and new roots will follow. Super pleased. And then we have the Regentii. I have two pieces of Regentii here. One and two, because it was a large plant that kind of split in two when I cleaned it up. I potted them up separately. And on the second piece, I've lost a new growth right here, which is a big shame. The next one, I'm confident it'll amount to something, but I'm super wary of that black over there. So these don't get sprayed from this angle. I come at it from the opposite angle and only just target the rim so that the ceramist wicks up whatever it needs to and can without even getting close to these growths. Because although the black down here just strikes me as being part of the growth sheath, it's not normal that it goes black like that and dries off, fetching the growth. On, not a single Rapiculus lelia behaves that way, so I have to be really careful there. And the other piece is doing quite remarkably as well. Beautiful new roots. And there's a new growth right there. So I'm really pleased. I'm really pleased considering what we were up against when they arrived. Fabulous. Very happy to see that. Now, here's one that I also got, which is still not pot bound, still to my understanding isn't strong with regards to growing roots. I see one down in there, but it's, it's you know, it's, it's a start, but we need a lot more than that too. There we go. And this is important because this new growth has survived. This new growth is new because on the repotting of this one, I broke off one new growth and one failed. I had three new growths on the repot. One I broke off when I filled up with lava and the other one failed. So I was left with one, but I'm getting another one. And I apologize if anybody is triggered by that spider. I love my spiders. They are very welcome in my pots. And then I'm going to show you the last one, the gracilis of this order. Oh my goodness, I had a new growth. I was so thrilled about it, but it failed. And now I'm not sure this is going to make it. Although not scale infested when it arrived, this is weeds. I'm not pulling them out just yet because I will move the orchid. It wasn't infested with scale when it arrived, but you can see the signs of the damage there all over from the scale. So what a shame I lost that new growth. 
and it's possible that it was my spraying that did that because I thought it was going to be able to take some foliar feeding while it was already potted up. Clearly I was wrong. That could be another new growth. If it is, we are in business and it's going to try again. But I am very doubtful about this one. Very doubtful, which is a shame. A real shame. And the more I look at it, actually, the more this looks like a new growth. I'll see it better on the screen and confirm. But what the Tres Amigos did recently, here's a Gracilis. And I wanted to show them to you next to each other from Großbrechner Orchideen. The Orchid Room, Melissa Walker and Michael McCarthy sent me a box of orchids and included was a Gracilis because they all saw this one and then they found this one for me. What a difference, hey? Look at that. When I saw this, oh, I almost lost the plot and I put it out of the box. It's doing superbly. This one lives inside. Both of these two do, I'm sorry. Everybody else is outside. Both live inside because I want this one to get established. Look at those roots coming out, guys. Oh, so happy. I'm so pleased, so happy. It's not like I want to lose this, but to, to get a possible replacement here. Yeah, yeah, that was, oh, that moved me. That really did. And then finally, but not really a ridiculous one, here's a Diana. And I left her for last because she kind of fits, kind of doesn't. Because of her size, she fits. And because of her care and culture, she fits. So she's grouped in with them. She's in the grit, lava rock, and ceramics mix. And before I only had the grit as the top dressing and I've just filled up the pot recently with lava rock because I, I didn't want to have to mist her so much. She's not the same as all the others. I have to be a little bit more careful with this one, especially as, you know, I've got roots coming, but I don't want them to get soggy and mess up. I don't. I need another new growth before I can be a little bit more radical with this one. So there's a lot, a lot of little considerations. Some are a water only for the ones that aren't growing and only at noon. And then there's those that are growing that get a little bit of a fertilizer spray in the morning. And then at noon, they get that normal flush again. Spray flush, not complete throughout the pot flush. So for the time being, you know, there's not much else I need to do with my orchids, but these Repiculus Lelias are grabbing my attention, especially the ones that are living outside for the first time since they've arrived in my collection. I'm really trying to monitor them. So I hope that you enjoyed this little update. I apologize if it was a bit too long. Um, I wanted to go a little bit faster through them and then suddenly there's things to point out. I appreciate having you here. If you have any questions at all, if you grow these, let me know. I'm always keen to hear other people that are growing these little ones. Really appreciate your time. Please stay safe, have a great day. Take care, bye.